Thanks for joining us today at Lighthouse Outreach Ministries. We're lighting the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, listen today as Pastor Green shares some biblical truths that will shine upon the true light, Jesus Christ. to Psalms, the 92nd chapter, the 92nd chapter of Psalms. How many of you love Psalms? Sometimes I just open the book of Psalms and just read me a Psalms. It's always good. If you never know what to read, just turn to the book of Psalms. Amen. We're going to start in Psalms 92, verse 12. And we're going to read today, our primary text is going to be really just uh, a few verses today. We're going to focus on those verses. Now, if you will, you can read right along with me in Psalms 92, verse 12. We're going to read 12 through 15, so ready, let's read. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and that there is no unrighteousness in him. Would you bow your heads with me and let's pray. Father God, I come to you this morning and I thank you for your word. It is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. Lord, as we embark this morning on breaking this bread, on receiving the word that you have given, God, I pray right now that every heart would be open to receive this word. And I pray that this word will bring entrance and light. God, where there's darkness, it'll bring light. Where there's despair, that it'll bring hope. Where there's distress, that it'll bring comfort. Where there's turmoil, that it'll bring peace. Where there's fear, that it'll bring bring faith. God, where there's anything lacking, let your word Do its work as we open our hearts now to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray and the church said, amen. How many of you, is your hearts open? God wants your heart wide open. Amen, because your heart is like a field and the word is the seed. And when the seed falls on good soil, it'll bring forth a good harvest 30, 60, and even 100 times as much. Amen. So God wants to bless you with his word today. Okay. As I was reading these scriptures, I started looking at verse 12, and it said, The righteous shall flourish. Now, that word there is also interpreted as thrive. The righteous will thrive like a palm tree. Now, I asked Brother Barry to put me up a picture of a palm tree. Most all of us know what palm trees look like if you've ever been down to Florida. And all of us live in Alabama, so all of us has been to Florida, so you know what a palm tree looks like. And there's many varieties of palm trees in the world today. But they all have a general appearance that you can pretty much know it's a palm tree. This is sort of what a palm tree looks like. And you know, palm trees survive hurricanes when no other tree can stand against it. That is the most resilient tree. A lot of times you'll go down to Florida and you'll see after a hurricane with 100 mile per hour winds that all kinds of brush and trees were just cut off, ripped up, thrown down, but there's the good old palm tree still standing. It's resilient. It's able to bend with the blow. Come on. It's able to bend with the blow. It just bends and pops right back up. Amen. It's able to rock and roll, amen? It just bends with it, goes with the flow. 
But he said, the righteous shall flourish like the palm trees. I, I looked up some of the information. The Hebrew word for flourish here means to bloom or blossom, to spread or grow, to break forth, break out, or spring forth. Amen? Palm trees are known for standing tall and living long. To flourish or thrive like a palm tree means to stand tall and live long. Notice he talked about even in the, my old age, amen, I will still bring forth fruit. The righteous, therefore, according to the word of the Lord, those that are in right standing with God through the blood of Jesus. We will live long. We will be upright. We will be useful. And we will be fruitful. Can I hear an amen? Night before last, I was praying. And the Lord said, prophesy. Prophesy. And I said, Lord, what shall I prophesy? And he said, let the earth bring forth her fruit. Let the earth bring forth her fruit. And I began to prophesy what the Lord gave me. Let the earth bring forth her fruit. Notice when you look at Psalms 92, it says that the righteous will flourish. We will thrive like the palm tree. And we will bring forth our fruit even unto old age. He compares us to the palm tree. You're a palm tree. You're resilient, upright, standing strong, able to endure the greatest storms, the most powerful winds. You're able to. Because the righteous, those in right standing with God through the blood of Jesus, are like a palm tree. You're like a palm tree. Amen? Praise God. Palm trees are mentioned in the Bible 40 times. So they do have a rele relevance, a great relevance. 40 times does God mention palm trees. Palm trees are among the best known and most widely cultivated plant families in the world. They're found in habitats from rainforest to deserts. Did you hear what I said? The palm trees are in rainforest. They can grow in very, very, very wet climates all the way to deserts. Do you hear what the Spirit is saying? Even in your most wetlands, even to your most driest deserts, the palm tree flourishes. That's you. That's you. You flourish in the wetlands or the dry lands, in the good times or the bad times. You're flourishing. You're bringing forth fruit. Come on. We're still bringing forth fruit unto the glory of God to make him known, just to know him and make him known. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just feel such a such a, a powerful word from the Lord today in this for you and for us, for all of us. It just means that we can grow in most every habitat. We can grow in whatever season we're in. We go through seasons. You will have seasons in your life where you're on the mountain. And you'll have a season in your life behind it that you're in the lowest valley. Those seasons, they'll come and they'll go. But you, the righteous, shall flourish in every season. Why? Because the Lord said so. How do I know that I'll flourish? Because the Lord said so. He said the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree does. So when God says you're going to flourish like something, we have to study the something to know what he's talking about. In barren soil, palm trees 
Now watch this. In barren soil, palm trees are watered deep at the roots. They draw their water from deep, from the roots. So when there are barren and dry lands, times of your life where it seems so barren and dry, where do you get your water from? From the roots. Come on, we draw from the root. They are useful not in just providing shade, but practically all parts of a palm tree has a useful purpose. The fruit of the palm tree provides a great part of a, the diet of the east. Some provide usable materials both in the Bible days and today. Various parts of the tree produce highly nutritious food. Parts of the tree provide fruit, oil, syrups, waxes, dyes, medicines, varnish, raffia, and palm woods. Did you know that? I've always looked at a palm tree and thought, that's a pretty tree. I didn't know, and I thought about the, you know, fruit that it provided, but as far as anything else, I really didn't know how many useful purposes a palm tree has. What God is trying to say to you today is you have many useful purposes because you're the righteous. He's made it so that you are useful and you are fruitful. See how beneficial you are to the earth and to the people in the earth. Amen? You can make these things that I just mentioned. You can make from these furniture, baskets, doormats, brushes, mattresses, ropes, thatching, and clothing. Who knew, right? I love to study God's word for these very reasons. Palms were laid before Jesus at his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. How many remember that? They took the palm branches and they worshiped Jesus with the palm branches and they laid them at his feet as he rode in on the donkey into Jerusalem. My God. Those are just a, a few of the places palm trees are mentioned. If you want to do a study, just search palm trees and see the 40 different places they're mentioned in the Bible. Read about them. There's so much you can learn. The Bible says here, the uncompromisingly righteous shall be like a palm tree, long-lived, stately, upright, useful, and fruitful. Say these out loud with me. I will be long-lived, stately, upright, useful, and fruitful even until my old age. Woo! Amen! Don't that excite you? That just gets me excited that I'm useful even until my old age and I'm fruitful and I'm upright and I'm stately and I'm going to live long and I'm resilient and I can, I can, uh, I can go through any storm and, and still be useful and fruitful as I even go through it. I can grow in any season in any conditions, I'm still going to keep growing. That's you, the righteous. It's the uncompromisingly righteous that shall inherit the land. Amen? Now, on the next part of it, it says that the righteous shall grow. Like what? What does your Bible say? Read it. Like a cedar in Lebanon. Now, I know about a cedar tree. And I know about some things like a cedar chest. How many of you knows what a cedar chest is? How many of you have something made out of cedar in your home? You got, who's got something made out of cedar at your house? What you got, Henderson? 
got something made out of cedar, cedar a chester drawer made out of cedar. It's strong wood, isn't it? Well, the Bible says the righteous, now watch this, will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now, I asked Brother Barry to put us a picture. Isn't this a beautiful tree? Look how strong it looks. It's just got multiple levels and, 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 and bush that comes out. But the basin of the tree, very strong tree. So grow means to enlarge, especially upward, to grow, to grow up, to increase. The cedars in Lebanon are said to grow majestically. They are known as majestic trees. They're very majestic. They grow majestically. I think of this, they have like an awe to them. They are very majestic. The Bible says you, the righteous, are going to grow majestically. Amen? Stable is another word. Durable and incorruptible. They were very important in the Bible days. They have strong, beautiful wood. And they were used to build very important buildings in the Bible, such as temples and palaces. They would go for cedar wood, not a cheaper wood, not a weaker wood, a strong, durable, majestical, stable, incorruptible because they wanted long-lasting, long-lasting furniture, long-lasting temples, long-lasting palaces. So when they were looking for a wood that could hold up, come on, hold up. They would pick the cedar. Now God says, you righteous ones shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning. I feel him talking to us. I feel him building us up and encouraging us and strengthening us even now with his word. Amen. Last week we felt invincible. We felt bad to the bone because God gave us a good word. Well, he's giving you another one today to let you know who you are. Cedars. Watch this. Palms are found 40 times in the Bible. Watch this. God's good with numbers. Cedars are found 80 times in the Bible. Hallelujah. Cedars of Lebanon were particularly large and of the best quality. Now, he's talking about you now. Come on, child of God. He's he not talking about wood here. He's talking about you. Come on, you have a good quality. Amen. You're going to grow like that. You're going to grow like the cedars of Lebanon of a good quality. Hallelujah. Amen. They're resistant to disease. A cedar tree is resistant to disease. It has a pleasant smell. How many of you love to smell cedar? There ain't nothing like smelling some good cedar wood. The older they get, the better they get. Did you hear me? That's who you are. Say with me, the older I get, the better I get. Because I'm like the cedar in Lebanon. See, a lot of people won't know what you're talking about when you go tell your friends tomorrow. You know what? The older I get, the better I get because I'm like a cedar in Lebanon. They're going to look at you like, what are you talking about? Say, you should have been at church yesterday, and you would have known what I was talking about. Come on now. So we shall grow up like the cedars in Lebanon, majestic, stable, durable, incorruptible. You know, we have a promise from God that corruption shall put on incorruption. Amen? These trees live long they're basically incorruptible. They don't die easy. Even though we may face challenges, we keep going. And we keep growing. Say, I don't just keep going. I keep growing. God says the uncompromisingly righteous never stops growing. Do you think this cedar tree ever keeps growing? 
quits growing. It grows every day. Well, you can't see it. Sometimes we go out and look at a tree, and we can't tell from one day to the next that it grew. But over time, you can tell. And then eventually, you go out one day, and there's some fruit on that tree. Amen. That's how the righteous are. We keep going, and we keep growing. We are honorable, incorruptible, solid, stable, immovable. How many of you think you can move that cedar tree? Now, I might can go over to a palm tree, push it a little, and get a little movement out of it. But I promise you, you won't go over to that cedar tree and push on it and get it to move. There's times it's good to be bendable, especially in a storm. That's how a palm tree survives. But also a tree like this has to be immovable. Amen? This is why he compared us to even more than one tree. He said we'll grow like these cedar trees of Lebanon. We endure through the years and through the seasons of life. We don't know what the next season of our life shall be. None of us know what our next season shall be, but this we know. We will be, as the righteous we will be, as God has said we will be. And we will endure through the years, and we will endure through the seasons of life. We have withstood already, church, an onslaught of sin. Devils and demons. We've withstood sickness and disease. We only improve with age. Can I hear an amen? Do you realize what we've already endured? Do you realize this morning what already you've endured? What already you've come through and you're still going and you're still growing? Do you realize that today? Those who are in right standing with God through the blood of Jesus will keep going and will keep growing even until our old age. And we will not only just grow old and grow weak and grow weary. That is not what the word of God says will happen to you. Pay attention to the word. You will improve with age. Can you believe God to improve with age? We are clothed with strength and dignity. We will stand before kings. We will be held in honor. The righteous are upright and strong, unmoved by the winds of circumstance. If you place your faith, fir faith firmly in God, then you will possess this strength and this vitality that we read about that the cedars of Lebanon possess and only get better with age. Amen? God's going to cause us to flourish. God will cause you to thrive. Amen? He will cause you to thrive, cause you to flourish. He said, you will bring forth fruit in old age. Now, I like this. You will be fat and flourishing. I thought, well, I fit the role. You know, we say sometimes, well, I'm getting fat and I'm flourishing. Fat there actually means prosperous, rich, and fertile. Amen? You'll still be, um, fat means you'll, you'll be enriched. You'll be prosperous. It can mean financially as well, but it just means that you'll be, you'll be fertile. You'll still be bringing forth fruit. If you want to, just hold that in, in, hold the place where you're at there in Psalms 92, but look at Psalms 1 verse 3. Psalms 1 verse 3 says, I'll give you just a minute to get there. Psalms 1 verse 3. It says, the one who trusts in the Lord and delights in his word is like a tree planted by streams of water 
which yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither and whatever they do will prosper. This is what fat means. Fat means that because you trust in the Lord, because your trust is in the Lord, you're like a tree that brings forth. Amen. You draw your water from, you're near the water, you're near the river. You, you draw your water from those streams of living water. Amen. And we then yield fruit. You know it takes water to produce fruit. A tree cannot produce fruit without water. It's a necessity. Therefore, it is with us. It's a necessity that we draw from the living water. Jesus talked a lot about it. Drink. Come and drink. If any man's thirsty, let him come and drink. He said, you know, if we will just draw from him, we'll bring forth fruit. When you receive from the Holy Ghost, when you drink of the Spirit, amen, then you'll produce fruit. Amen. When you get in the flesh, you get in a place where you're not producing fruit. Amen. Because you can't produce fruit apart from God and apart from drinking from that living water, that fountain of living water. Oh, thou fount of living water. Amen. And it also says that the leaf won't wither. I brought in some of my plants from outside through the winter, and they're in my house and I noticed that leaves were just dropping everywhere around one of my ferns. And it's a big fern. But dead leaves were just dropping everywhere. And it was because I was not watering it. I was not watering it enough. I was giving it some water and some parts were staying green. But some didn't have enough supply of water. And the leaves were just dying and dropping off. And when you increase the water, you know, then the leaf doesn't so, you know, this is speaking, all of this plant terminology is not talking about plants, but God is showing us the parallel of how it is with plants as it will be with us. We will be like these plants, and therefore it's essential that we draw from the well. Amen. We draw from the living water. We drink of the Spirit. Amen. Drink of the water that Jesus gives us to drink. Amen. He has a well of living water. He says, if any man's thirsty, let him come and drink. Amen. Come and receive. He said, receive freely. Receive freely. So there's no charge for this water. Amen. There ain't no charge. Just all you got to be is thirsty. And let everyone who's thirsty come and drink. And he who's thirsty shall be filled. When you're thirsty and you come to the Lord, he'll fill you. And when he fills you, you'll bear fruit. Amen. It'll bless you. It'll prosper you. This is the living water that leads to eternal life. That he who drinks it shall never perish, but shall live eternally. This is the living water. Jesus said this is it. If we honor the Lord, we won't grow old and weak and sickly and lose our faculties. Now, I challenge you with this word because God's word is true. Let every man be a liar, but let God's word be true. Some people tell you you've got to grow old, you've got to get sick in order to die. The devil's a liar. You don't have to get old and get sick to go home to heaven, your heavenly home. When you honor the Lord, you won't grow old and sick and weak and lose your faculties. God's word says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree and grow like the cedars of Lebanon. You know, think of the men of God that you sometimes look at their lives that, that they just got better with age. And even when they went home to be with the Lord, they were still strong in the Lord. They were still bearing fruit. They were still preaching the gospel. Come on. That's how God says you're going in. Hallelujah. That's how I'm going in. Come on. Say, that's how I'm going in. I'm not going in weak and sick and beggarly and all this. Not when God's word contradicts that. Can we stand on God's word this morning? Can we say I'm going to stand on Psalms 92, that I will flourish, 
and I won't grow weak and sick, that I will be strong like a palm tree. Come on. I'll be like a cedar in Lebanon, and I'll bring forth my fruit in old age, and I'll only get better with age. Come on, a good old steak gets better with age, don't it? Sometimes they just age a steak. Just age it. It gets aged. Come on, because it gets better with age. And so it is with the righteous. The uncompromisingly righteous get better with age. How many of you believe Abraham, your father in the faith, got better with age? How many of you believe your mama, Sarah, Sarah, your mother in the faith, Sarah, she got better with age? When she was younger, she was good. But as she got older, she got better. How many? No, she got wiser. Amen. She trusted the Lord more. She honored the Lord more. She served the Lord more. Amen. The older she got, the wiser she got. The Bible says, be not wise in your own eyes and in your own conceits, but honor the Lord. Fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. What does the fear mean? It doesn't mean be afraid and run away from him. It means have a reverent fear of God. Revere him, awe him. Revere him. Show some reverence toward God. Amen? Honor him in your old age. Honor him in your young age. Honor him at every age. And it will go good for you. You know, it is good for you to honor the Lord. It is good for you to fear the Lord. God says the way you treat God will affect your entire life. If you show disregard for God, it won't go good for your life. But if you honor the Lord, His word contradicts that you'll get weakly and sickly, lose your mind, lose your faculties. What if we could just say today, you know what? I'm going to expect that the older I get, the better I'm going to get. And I'm going to grow stronger in the Lord. I'm not going to decrease. I'm going to increase in my knowledge of the Lord. Come on. In my relationship with the Lord. I'm going to increase. How many of you could, let's just believe God at his word. Let's take him at his word. Uh, I mean, you know, Sarah, she was barren in her old age, but she brought forth a child. Come on, you hear me? She had a baby when she was old. Come on, I had a dream this week. I had a baby. That was a weird thing. I had a weird happening this week. Dreamed I was pregnant. Dreamed I had a baby. More than that, I dreamed I delivered my own baby. That was even weirder. Somebody was in the room that didn't talk to me. I believe it was the Holy Ghost giving me the strength. Amen? We will not be barren in our old age. We will bring forth fruit unto the glory and the honor of God. That's what God says about the uncompromisingly righteous. You'll be fertile. You'll be productive. You'll be prosperous. And you'll be full of joy. Sounds good to me. What about you? You know, today you go to the doctors, you talk to people. All they can give you about getting old discourages you, makes you want to quit, makes you want to give up, makes you want to hurry up and get through and get on to heaven. Don't even have any will or want to down here anymore. And you become unuseful and you become discouraged and you become downcast. Don't listen to the world. Listen to the word. Come on. Tell your neighbor, say, don't listen to the world. Listen to the word. Say, stop listening to the world. They're lying. Listen to the word. Psalms 92 says what? The righteous. Come on. The righteous shall flourish like that beautiful palm tree and grow like the cedars. In Lebanon. Woo! That's your report. Whose report will you believe? The doctors or the Lord's? It's your choice. If you want to believe the report of the world, you can. 
And you can get the same results, or you can believe the report of the Lord, remind God of his promises. When you're feeling weak, you say, God, you said the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like the palm trees. These are things you need to memorize in your heart. I will grow like the cedars. Prophesy over your body. Prophesy over yourself. Amen. I'm going to flourish like the palm tree. I'm going to grow like a cedar in Lebanon because the Lord said the uncompromisingly righteous. And I'm going to bring forth fruit in my old age. I'm going to be useful. I'm going to be fruitful. God's put me here for a purpose. Amen. I draw my water from him. Amen. I drink of the living water and I bring forth fruit. I get better with age. Praise the Lord. We are living memorials of the goodness of God. Did you hear what I said? We are living memorials of the goodness of God. How many can you, of you can say, I see the evidence of his goodness all over my life. I see his promises in fulfillment all over my life. How many of you can see God's goodness in your life? How many of you can see his promises being fulfilled in your life? You know what we are? I'm going to say it again. We're living memorials of the goodness of God. Say this with me. I am a living memorial of the goodness of God to make his name known to a lost and a dying world that need him as much as I do. People everywhere need the Lord. Some people say that's a corny song. People need the Lord. But people do. It ain't a corny song. Everybody needs the Lord. I don't care who they are. Everybody needs the Lord. Amen? Our blessed lives show that the Lord is upright, that he's faithful to his promises, and it shows that he is our rock and there is no unrighteousness in him at all. That's what our lives show, that God is upright. See, he's like this. Amen? He's strong. He's upright. He said, I am holy, therefore you be holy also. Amen? Praise the Lord. He's a good, good father. Another mention, this was good. God was so good. I was eating this up last night. I don't know about y'all, but I was enjoying this word so much. I said, Lord, give me some more. Give me something else. He said, oh, oh I, can, I can do that. I can give you some more. I said, give me some more. I'm still hungry. So sometimes I eat a lot. But sometimes I'll say, okay, I got the palm, palm tree, and I got the cedar in Lebanon. That was good. Give me something else. He said, oh, yeah, you're like a green olive tree. Okay, Psalms 52, verse 8. Turn there with me. Psalms 52, verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God. Forever and ever, I am like a green olive tree. Now, I asked Brother Barry to put up an olive tree. This is a picture of a grove of green olive trees. And I had him to do one more picture of actually the olives that grow on the trees. It might be a little bit hard to see. These are some of the olives, the green olives that grow on the olive trees. Amen? Like a green olive tree. Olives are, you know, throughout the Bible, we see the purpose of the olive tree, that it brings forth an oil. Uh, how many of you like green olives? How many of you like black olives? I like olives on my pickles, I mean my pickles, my pizza. And my husband, he eats green olives just right out of the jar. He just loves olives, green olives, that tart flavor that comes with them. I don't like them straight, but I like them on pizzas and things like that. But those black olives are very good. But you know, all throughout the Bible, he talks about different plants and trees. And he compares the righteous. That you're like that 
it, you're full of sap. You're full of oil. Oil always represents who? Like the green olive tree with the green olives, you're full of oil. Amen. And that's what we have. We're to keep that oil flowing. Amen. Keep that Holy Spirit flowing in us and through us. Amen. Many good sources for olives. Too many to even list. Many, many, many good sources for the olives. I want to ask um, Barry, if he will, to play the song, if he's able to, the last song. Brother Barry, can you play the last song that we sang about we were made to thrive? That song goes exactly with this message today. We were, we were made to know him and to be known of him. Amen. We were made to thrive, to flourish. Amen. I'm going to see if he can get it back here. And you'll see how this song just goes right with this message today. Amen. <laughs> 